Welcome to Mornings with Mark. The passage that I'm meditating on today is the first reading for this upcoming Sunday, Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. It's a story that continues one that we've been reading over the last week or two, in which Peter and John have entered the temple. They healed a lame man as they were going in who had hoped for silver and gold from them, but got something better as Peter uh, helped him stand up by the power of God. And the man's legs were strengthened. He was healed. People gathered around. Peter used it as an opportunity to begin to tell them about Jesus. Uh, they are arrested, but even as they are arrested, uh, we, we learned that about 5,000 people believed because of the word God had spoken through Peter. Today's passage picks up there in verse 5 of chapter 4. The next day their elders, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. What a powerful word. This whole scene, all the book of Acts, as the Spirit is on the move among these disciples, these apostles, and people are coming to faith. It makes me think about how in our day we long to see God's movement in us and through us. And in fact, we long for it so much that we get caught up in trying to do it in our own power. Building names for ourselves by being such great churches or great people or working so hard feverishly to accomplish good in our world. We try to tell people about Jesus, get them to listen to us. And then I look at what's happening here. And we see Peter and John doing the good God enables them to do. And as they do that good, people say, well, how does that happen? Where is that goodness coming from? And so they tell them about Jesus. It's not being forced. To, Peter's not forcing Jesus down their throats. He's not trying to do all this work or even beginning to pretend that the work's happening because of his own power or, as he said in last week's passage, his own piety. Peter is walking in the Spirit, by the power of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, doing the good God enables him to do. It's not everything, but it's what Peter and John are given to do. And I hear God calling me to do the good that I'm called to do, to walk with the Spirit, in the Spirit, by the Spirit's power, do what I can, what I'm called to do, and, and allow my good works, our good works, to lead people to say, what's that about? Where does that power, that inspiration come from? And then we get to tell them all about Jesus. You know, that's my longing for Salem, our church, for Christ's church and every church, that we would go about living in the Spirit, praying for the power of the Spirit, stepping forward to do the good God's calling us to do. And as we do it, waiting for people to ask us, where did all those good deeds come from? Why are you doing what you're doing, living as you're living in the midst of this world? I think we'd be a lot more effective that way, I have no doubt. You know, the works of the flesh, when we're trying to do in our own power, Paul says in Galatians 5, they're obvious. And I invite you to take a look at that, Galatians 5. Galatians 5, he also goes on to say what the works of, or the fruit of the Spirit is when we live in the Spirit. And I pray that we'll be um, evidencing that fruit of the Spirit in our lives, and I have no doubt that as we do, and it is happening, that 
people will come and ask, where does that inspiration, that life, that power come from? Let's pray together. God, thank you for those people who have been examples for us in our own lives and certainly in the scripture, who have lived by your spirit, who have loved by your power, and who have lifted people up in their lives such that they are drawn to you. God, help us to do the good deeds that you created us to do and that you are empowering us to do. And as we do them, may we be witnesses to your love, to your grace, to your reality. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you.